If you're looking for an RV trip planner, you've come to the right place because today I'm going to show you my favorite. RV Life's Trip Wizard is hands down the best RV trip planner out there. I've been using it for four years and it just keeps getting better and better with all the upgrades they've done. Trip Wizard is only a piece of the whole RV Life bundle. Not only do they have trip planning, they also have RV maintenance, they have RV Safe GPS, they have an app, they have a lot to offer. So if you're interested in the RV Trip Planner as well as everything else, I will put a link down below along with our affiliate link and code which will save you 25%. Once you have joined RV Life and you go into Trip Wizard, the first thing you're going to want to do is click here on this little person so you can update your default settings. The general user settings are pretty broad based. They're not very specific. So you can go through and decide how you want to set those up. I do prefer to have auto load on. So that keeps my current trip it, every time I go into it, it automatically opens it for me. I don't have to go in and open it when I go into trip wizard. Next is your specific RV info. You can see I have ours punched in right here and that's the height length and weight of your RV. Now this is really important, especially if you're using the RV Life app and you're doing the RV Safe GPS. So you really need to put in your dimensions so that way when it routes you, it routes you correctly and you don't have to worry about low bridges or the weight bearing based on your RV. You can type this in manually or you can go in here to look up RV info. You can choose your RV. Ours is a motorhome and it's a 2016. We have a Tiffin and it is an Allegro Red and it's a 33AA. So you can see it has re-pulled up our info right here for us. And so next we're gonna go to driving and routing. So you can see here with the routing, you can avoid tunnels, tolls, highways, whatever you wanna put in here for your driving route. And then on the right side, this is gonna give you a radius, which I'll show you later. So as you're choosing campgrounds, you can choose how far you want to drive. You can base this on hours or you can base it on miles. When you come down here, you can see I have classic driving radius marked and I have the three rings marked as 50 miles, 100 miles, or 200 miles. And you can change this however you want. You can also do an advanced driving radius. You'll see it changes the route to be more specific per the road. You can turn the radius off altogether. Or you can also just say, I only wanna drive three hours a day and that will adjust your rings. Now I'll show you these actually on the map as we go through. And the next is expenses. You can punch these in if you like. I usually don't use this part of RV Trip Wizard, but you can. So I'm gonna save the default settings. And then here is your account. You can see it's your passwords, all of that stuff. And then next, if you need help, they actually have um, a lot of help. There is a user's guide, there's community support if you wanna go over and ask questions, and they have a ton of videos here for you as well. Now you can also contact them if you feel like something's not working right, and this will send them a message for you. Also, if you're at an RV park that they don't have in their database, you can insert that here and they'll look it up and they'll get that in the database. And here's some videos to help you if you're new to RV Trip Wizard. You can also do their featured tour here and it does a really nice job showing you the features of RV Trip Wizard. We're gonna end the tour here. And let's go back to the default settings. What's new is anytime there's any kind of improvements, it's gonna put it in the what's new tab. And then this, you can look at your subscription. So we're gonna start by building a new trip. Even though this is open, it pulled this open, we're gonna walk through and create a trip because I feel like that's the best way to show you how to use Trip Wizard. So you're gonna click on a new trip. So we are gonna call this example. And then yes, we know the date we're leaving, so we're gonna create. You can choose one of three ways to start your location. You can put in your location, it will go by GPS. You can punch in the name of a park, or you can click on the map. So we are gonna start by putting in where we are. So we're gonna say we're at McDill Air Force Base in Tampa, and we are gonna start there. And you can see it's gonna show you trip settings for this specific trip. And this is going to initially be all the default settings we just went through when you first joined. 
So if you want to make any changes to these, you can now. Now the only thing I want to change is the pre-departure email. If you would like an email before you're supposed to leave a current campground to go to your next campground, keep this on. I do not like all the emails, so I'm going to turn it off. And then you can see all the trip settings are exactly the same as what we set up in the defaults. So we're going to hit save and finish. And then we're just going to go ahead and add a couple of campgrounds here to show you how easy it is to start building your trip. So as you can see, we have all of these icons here for all the different types of campgrounds. And you can turn these on or off. This little tent here actually will get rid of all the campgrounds or it's going to turn them on for you. Now you can see the rings here. Let me back out a little bit. You can see the three rings. Those are the travel rings we talked about. And this is 50 miles, 100 miles, and 200 miles. You can have these on or off, whatever is easy for you as you build your trip. I'm going to go ahead and turn them off. And to do that, all you have to do is to go in your trip tools. And you can see this wrench here is the trip tools for this specific trip. So we're going to click on that, click trip settings routing and driving and we're going to come down here and we're going to say don't show a radius so we're going to turn that off and hit save let's go over and start researching what type of campground we want to go to you can decide what is showing up on your map by going to show filters so let's click show filters and go to park types and you can see you can choose which kind of park shows up. Do you want just state parks? Do you want national parks, city parks? These are all of my favorites. I, like, I do prefer these over commercial private parks, hands down. I think you get more space. It's more cozy. You're not as cramped. So, you know, these are always my favorites. So let's go ahead and click on those. Oh, as well as the military camps. You guys all know I love staying on the military facilities too. These are the filters for park types. Now that's not the only filters in here. You can also filter for the rating, for features. Do you want a pull through site? Do you need pets allowed? And then what kind of hookups do you need? Maybe you, maybe you always like full hookups and that's just fine. And you can click that right here. Now you can also go all the way down here to brands and clubs and memberships and you can see you can choose just the passport america campgrounds or maybe just thousand trails campgrounds if you're a member of those i am going to take those out and if you want to clear all the filters all you have to do is hit clear filters and they all go away just so you know you don't have to x them all out so let's go back up and click on some of these um, campgrounds types again so we can start researching where we want to stay. And when you choose one, you get a quick glance at that specific RV park or campground. You can see the name and the rating and how many reviews it has. It also tells you here how many miles it is from where you currently are located. So that way you don't have to guess how long it's going to take you to get there. Now you can do one of two things from here. You can actually go into the park details or you can just add it to your trip if you already know that's where you want to go. So first, let's peek at park details. This is all the campground information. This is specific amenities for this campground. So you, at a glance, you'll know if it's full hookups, partial hookups. Here's some quick reviews you can take a peek at. Just some tips that other people had written in and then the average weather in this area. Now, if you need more reviews on this specific campground, you can click read more reviews and that's going to take you to RV Life's campground reviews. If you want to dive in a little deeper, you can click on the website link or call the campground directly to get more information or to make your reservation. But let's go ahead and click here and add it to our trip. And we're going to say we want to stay five nights and we're going to add it after McDill Air Force Base so you can leave it the last stop and then you're gonna add a trip. Now there's two ways that I go in and add stops to my RV trip.
I can sometimes go in and I make a wish list of the campgrounds I want to go to and kind of figure out my route over time. And then I'll go in and fine tune it, make my reservations, kind of move it around as far as days here and there. But I'll have a general idea of which direction we're going. So let's say we are headed up the East Coast. So let's zoom out so we get an idea of more campgrounds. So first we're going to go to the city park and then let's start heading north. Oh, this one looks pretty good. This one is an 8 out of 10. The park looks pretty good. So we can add it to our trip here without going into the full details. So let's say another 7 nights and we're going to add it to the last stop and then add, our, add it to our trip. So let's move further north and we're just going to randomly pick some campgrounds here. Ooh, let's choose this one. It's one of our favorites. We've stayed there a few times and this is at Catherine Abbey Hannah. It can be a little difficult to get into that campground. So if you have an opportunity, make sure you go there. All right, let's add it to our trip. And then let's do a couple more. You can see as we zoom out how you lose the icon that says the specific type of campground. But if you zoom in, it will come back up again. So let's go ahead and choose this one. This one looks pretty good. It's a nine. Add a few more days and add it to your trip. Now, what if you're traveling and you want to stay at a Cracker Barrel? You're just going to do a quick overnight. You're trying to get on up the coast to maybe Charleston and you're passing through Savannah but need to stop. So let's type in Cracker Barrel and in Savannah. And we're gonna choose this and we are going to add this to our trip as well. And we're staying overnight in the parking lot for one night and we're gonna add it to our trip. This is one of the things I like the most about RV Trip Wizard is the fact that you can punch in any address that's on the map. So if you wanna put in the Cracker Barrel or if you plan to driveway surf, you can put in that specific address. Or if you plan to go to a Harvest Host, I know there's one in the area that we stayed at. It's a brewery, so we can punch that in. Now, Harvest Host and Boondockers Welcome will not be populated in Trip Wizard. They are separate memberships, but you can punch them in and pull them up once you know what stops you're going to. So you can see as I'm planning my stops, Cracker Barrel is further out than the brewery. So let's drag and drop and switch places. So you can see these little dots here. If you grab those and pull it up, you can trade places. So it's really easy to rearrange your campgrounds, move them around, as much as you need to as you're trying to figure out where you want to go and what campgrounds you want to add to your trip. Now you can see here I didn't put how many nights we're staying here at the brewery so that's easy to go back in and make changes to. All you have to do is highlight it, click on the pencil and I'm going to add a night and then save it. And you can do a few other things here with these two. And there's quite a few things that I do as I'm planning my trips. So I know what campgrounds I've reserved and I know if I want to make changes later on. So let's say that we have made reservations for the Manatee Hammock Campground. And let's go in and I'm going to show you a couple things that I do. So let's say I could only get five nights instead of seven. So let's change that to five. And then you can add whatever you want here. You can type reserve so you know you've reserved it. You can type paid and reserved. So you can change the stop name to whatever you want. And then you can also put things in the comments. Let's say these have uh, no sewer. Or you can add in your site number as well. So we're site, let's say 102, and then save that. Now you can also, if you wanna lock this in, which is one of the features that they've upgraded is this lock. I love this lock. This was one of the things that made me crazy before and they fixed it. So once I've made the reservations now, I hit this lock and this this won't move no matter what. So these five nights and this date will not change. So if I come up here and let's say we couldn't get into Hardy Lakes and we had to delete it and you can see Manatee did not move. We're still slated to be there on the same day for five nights, but I have this gap I have to fill. So let's come down here to Blythe and let's say we couldn't get into Blythe and we have to delete these 
five knights. Now, if these two are not locked in place, watch what happens. So initially, this was set for June the 6th to arrive at the brewing company. And let's delete Blythe, and you can see what happens when we delete them. Now, the brewing company just moved up to fill that spot instead of saying, staying on 6-6. Six, six. Once you make your actual reservations, you can lock it in and secure it. Let's look at another way that you can lock it in. Let's go back down to Florida. So it actually makes sense since we got rid of that other campground and we're leaving McDill. So let's add, so let's go back to our filters here and let's clear all the filters and look at all the campgrounds that are available. Let's say we couldn't get that one and all the state parks are full. So now we have to look at everything in the area. So let's look, ooh, that one's only a four. So let's look at the outpost. Let's say we called and we were able to make reservations. So let's add it to our trip. And we're actually gonna book, put it in right after McDill. So let's click that. And then it's five nights. And then we're gonna lock the day to stay. So we know for sure we booked it and we wanna go there and then we're gonna add it to our trip. So you can see when it pops up, it already has the lock on it. It's there for five days and we're good to go. Now let's say something happens and you need to stay at your previous campground two more nights because you have engine trouble. So instead of leaving McDill on 515, we actually need to leave on 517. So in order to do this, we actually have to take days away from the outpost because if you go in and see if we add two nights to McDill, we're going to get a warning. It's going to tell us there's a problem and there's no room. Trip Wizard knows that there's no space here because you've locked these and they can't move up. So let's go in and unlock this and we're going to change it to three nights and you can do one of two things. You can just save it from here and you see you have your two nights available. So we can go here to McDill and we can add the two nights here and hit save. And you can see now we're back on track again. Now the other way you can do it is you can go ahead and still lock in this one in place by coming up here to this uh, lock date of stay button here. So we can click on that and click the calendar to open it up. We actually want to get there on the 17th and we are staying for three nights. So we're leaving on the 20th and then save. And you can see now we have the two nights available up here. These are locked in place. And we can simply come up here to McDill and we can save those. When these are locked, you cannot drag and drop them. So you can see I can rearrange these all I want, but you cannot rearrange them once they are locked. Let's take a little tour around the screen here so you can kind of see what everything will do for you. So we're going to start at the top and you can see this is the new trip button that we initially used to open this example. You can also open an old trip. So if you click on here, this is going to show all the trips that I have set up. I also have all of our old trips. They are archived. That's another thing I really like about Trip Wizard is the fact that all of my trips are here from the day I started using this. So I can go back if I'm trying to find a specific campground, I can go back and let's do, let's open when we went to South Dakota. We'll open this trip and you can see that it has all the places we stayed before. If I'm trying to find that free city park, oh, there it is. And I can check out that specific campground and see if I want to go back there again. Let's go back to open a trip and let's go back to our current trip. These are our active trips that we've been working on. So let's open this back up and we'll continue to move around the screen here. So you can see filters here, and this just means we do not have any filters on right now. Let's zoom in so we can choose some specific filters. All right, so let's choose pull through sites and a couple of types of campgrounds. And then we'll do, let's do dispersing or let's do disperse camping, maybe pets allowed. And then we're going to close the filter door and you can see up here, it's always going to tell you how many filters are in use. Now to turn it off quickly, 
all you have to do is click here and all the filters are gone. It's going to give you all of your options or you can turn it right back on. Now your map settings are here, so let's pull those up. You can take a peek at all of your options on this screen. First is your map style. So you can change it to whichever style you would like. So we'll let's change it to terrain just so you get an idea of what it looks like. And you can see it makes it a little bit different as far as um, all the streets are gone, all the mapping um, stuff is off the screen. So let's go back to our map settings again. I do prefer the street map. That's my favorite. So let's put it back on there. And here's your driving radius again. You don't have to go to the wrench. You also have another option to turn it on and off here. So if I wanted to turn it back on again, here is my driving radius. Let me shrink my screen so you can see it. And that's going to give me my miles. And this one that they're showing now is the advanced radius. Or we can turn it to the classic radius, which are just the circles. And I'm going to turn this one back off. And let's keep going. So these are the filters for you right here on the map settings. So this is the campgrounds. You can turn them on or off. POIs are points of interest and you can turn those on or off here. So I turned it off and then back on and you can see it's showing me points of interest that we can click. So if you're a member of the Elks Lodge, you can click on that. Now you can see it just gave me an error. Let me show you guys that again. So if you're too far out and you click on one of the filters, it's going to give you an error, error and ask you to zoom in. So all you have to do is double click on the map before you add any more. So let's add a casino. Let's add overnight parking, rest areas. And maybe you want to wash your RV. So let's add those in and you'll be able to see them. Let me X out of this. So now you can see them all on our map here. So it has Walmarts, it has um, Elks Lodge, it has Cracker Barrel. Hold on, I keep clicking it. It has Cracker Barrel. So you can see all your overnight places as well as your fuel. So let's go back into our map settings. And then this shows low clearances. I have it off, but if there's any low bridges or tunnels, it'll show that for you. And then this is a really cool thing that they, they've added on not too long ago. And this is National Parks, Monuments, and other sites. So if you click on this, and let's zoom out, see where a bunch of them are. Let's scroll over here. And you can kind of see the yellow on here. So let's zoom in a little bit more. Now these are all, it's highlighting public lands like BLM, um, free camping, those kind of things. You can see this is the Badlands. So these are all areas where you can camp for free. And then this national park is another area. So that's another filter item you can do if you're looking for these specific areas. So let's go back to the map setting and then you can see weather layers. So if you want to turn on radar or wind speed, you can do that as well as time zones. So we can turn that on and it will show you the different time zones throughout the US if you're like me and you forget when you cross that line. All right, so let's turn this off and let's keep going around our tour. Again, I kind of showed you this already. This simply turns your campgrounds on and off. So let's zoom into our map. All right, so now we're zoomed in and we can only see a piece of our trip. So if you want to see the entire trip, all you have to do is click here and it's going to condense it for you. Also, if you know a specific way that you want to drive your route and it's not showing you on here, so you can hit drag route on and let's say you're swinging by your friend's house. So you actually are going to drive 60 instead of going taking the four. So and this will pull you around and change your routing and it will alter your drive time for you. You can see here you can close your trip to get a better view of your map or you can bring it back here with this arrow and you can also look at your elevation so if you're wondering how steep the climb is going to be if you're going through one of those national parks that has some serious mountains this will let you know what your drive will entail 
Now down here on the right, you can see this button here. Now that will tell you your current position. So if you click that, the map will adjust to where you currently are, but I have this off in my browser, so it won't work here. So let's go back over to the tools here in our trip, and I wanna show you a couple of things that you can use. So we already talked about the trip settings. This is just setting up the basic background of your trip. If you're a member of any memberships and clubs, you can click here. And instead of showing up like a little triangle, like a little tent, they'll actually show up with their specific icon. So if you click all of these, their icons are actually going to show up on your map. So if you want to arrange these by your preferred, you can put what you want the most and then hit next and then show only preferred campgrounds. So we're going to hit save and then these will actually show up on your trip here. So let's talk about how you can export your trip in Trip Wizard. So if you want to print your specific trip, you can print only your stops, you can print the map, or you can print both the stops and the map. So you just hit open print page here and you can print your entire trip and it's going to talk about dates and if you have other information in there, it'll have all that for you. So I'm not actually going to print it, so let's go back. You can also export your trip, so you can export it to an Excel spreadsheet and name it whatever you want to name it, or you can download it for a GPS export. So click here if you want to take your trip and upload it to another GPS unit. You can also share a trip. So if you click copy public link, this is going to have all the specific addresses hidden. So if you're, say, driveway surfing at your aunt's house and you don't want that address made public, you can click here. Or if you don't mind sharing all your addresses, you can click there. You can also share your trip with another RV Trip Wizard member, and I've done this several times with our friends. So if we are coming up with ideas for a trip and we want to see if they're going to be in the area, all you have to do is type in their email address here, and it will send it to them. All right, let's back out of here. You can actually email your entire itinerary to you by clicking this box, and you can see that it has emailed it to me already. You can also get your turn by turn directions and that is right here and you can print those if you like. You can also copy this trip and make a second trip if you want to change things a little bit. I have two trips here for one time frame and that's because my daughter's having a baby so I have trip A and trip B while we're on baby watch so that can be very useful. And then you see further down you can delete this entire trip or delete stops on the trip. One of the really cool benefits to RV Life Trip Wizard is the fact that they also have an app. So as you build your trips on your computer, you can actually open them in on your phone so you can use it as your turn-by-turn -turn GPS. So let's go to the phone and let's pull up our trip. So you're going to want to go to the RV Life app. Let's pull it up. And then you're going to want to hit trips. So I'm going to hit trips. And that's going to pull up all the trips that I have that are active. If you have a trip that you've archived, it's not going to show up on here. Just your active trips. So our trip is called Example, and you can see it here, Second. Now if you hit the three little dots here at the bottom, you can start directions to the first stop. So let's click that. And you can either allow it to take the trip exactly as you have it in the planner. So if you have dragged your route, um, to do a different route than it recommends. You can match the planned route exactly or you can allow changes to the route and that's going to change you based on traffic, based on construction or anything else that's going on. So here your next option is you can avoid tolls if you want, avoid highways, however you want to do it and now you're going to view your RV safe directions. It's that easy to pull the trip into your phone for RV GPS turn by turn routing. Now when you're in the app you are going to want to make sure your profile's up to date and it has the the height, the length and the weight of your RV and it's easy to check that in your profile. So you can pull that up and check it. And it makes it really simple for turn by turn directions if you want to use RV Life for that. That's it for RV Trip Wizard. You can see how easy it is to use this program to not only build your trip but to make changes along the way.
Now, if you're still lost and you're not sure where to begin, I do have a blog that talks about how I decide how we're traveling, which direction we're going, and how I'm choosing campgrounds. So that may, might make it a little easier for you if you're at a point where you just don't know where to start. Let us know how RV trip planning is going for you down in the comments. If you have something specific you need help with, please drop that in below. And if I can't help you, I'm sure somebody watching this video can. Guess what? Hats are back. That's right. You asked, we listened. We are so excited. We have so many new designs, and not just for today is someday, but also for our veterans. Starting with this nice navy hat here. Check that out. Uh huh. And of course, we have a ton of today is someday hats. And of course, we have our leather hat. It's back. And this one is very limited. So we only have 100 of these. And once they're gone, they're, they're gone. gone. All of these hats come in multiple colors. Right. So you can actually choose your color this time along with the stitching. So we're pretty excited about that. And in case you're wondering, yes, these shirts are ours. <laughs> That's right. We went back to the drawing board. So yes, and we have it down the arm. We also, on our short sleeves, we also, you can get things on the arm. And we now have shirts, not just for the veteran, but also the veteran's family. And for those of you who support our military, but you're not veterans. That's right. And you can get other things other than Navy. We'll allow it. So you can get whatever service branch that Every you were branch. in. That's right. We just did it. You know, we're, we're Navy, so that's what we're advertising. But we do have them for other branches. That's the shirts and the hats. And the store is open right now, so don't wait. Some of these hats, once they're gone, they're gone. So make sure you look for the zip-up hoodies, the regular hoodies, and a ton of other items in the store. Of course, you can find it at todayissomeday.net or Click the link below that's down in the description. And once you do have your new shirt or hat, we'd love to see photos of those. Tag us on social media. We really want to see where you guys are going, what you're doing, and we love knowing what is your someday. Yeah, we like to know that our hats and shirts are out there in a state park or a national park before we actually get there.